Okay, welcome to understanding the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model. To begin with, this model is a little bit tricky because your teachers are going to teach it to you slightly different ways depending on your textbook and depending who they are. I'm going to try to teach it to you in the simplest form possible, something that can be applied to most of what you learn. Down here on the x-axis is real gross domestic product, and on the right, uh, I mean on the y-axis is the price level. Think of this as inflation, think of this as output. The first thing to understand is this model is real numbers from here to the right, and these numbers don't go on to infinity, meaning you can only make so much output. There's a limit to your output, and in this case, let's put this as full employment, meaning if we employ everybody and all of our resources, we can only make this much output. That's a big important thing to understand in this model. So there's a kind of not, it doesn't go on and on and on, it stops there at full employment. And the price level is inflation, so if this goes up in this direction, you have inflation. Okay, the first thing we're going to tackle is understanding the aggregate demand line. The aggregate demand line is drawn like this and it shows the relationship between the price level and how much aggregate demand there is in terms of real output. So it's the real output that buyers desire to purchase at each different price level and it's shaped like this. So at a high price level we have low output collectively desired to be purchased and at a low price level we have high output. So let's put A, D here. And you'll see that the aggregate demand curve slopes down like this. It slopes down because as price levels go up, people who have savings, for example, are finding that their savings aren't buying as much as they used to, so they buy less. This is called the real balance effect. It's a fancy term that just says if you have a bunch of money under your pillow, higher price levels means it doesn't buy as much. Then there's the interest rate effect. As price levels go up, given a constant supply of money, meaning a, um, a, 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 a static supply of money, then what's going to happen? As people demand more money to buy these things that have a higher price level, interest rates go up. This is called the interest rate effect. And when interest rates go up, you can buy less. So you have the real balances effect, that's one, and the interest rate effect, that's two. That gives us this sloping aggregate demand line. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to shift this aggregate demand line either to the right, or we're going to shift this aggregate demand line either to the right or to the left. And this is kind of saying, look, if it's not the price level, something else is changing. And you know what? Sometimes people overcomplicate these things. Here, let me change your uh, a color. And really, it's not that complicated. When the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right or to the left, it's directly related to the Keynesian idea, the aggregate expenditures model. And really, it's just talking about consumers changing their consumption patterns, business people changing their consumption patterns, or the government changing its consumption pattern. So all of those things that affect the consumer, like its wealth level, whether it can borrow money, whether it expects a good time or a bad time, whether taxes are changing, will shift this curve to the right or to the left. If consumers expect a good time, the aggregate demand line shifts to the right. If consumers expect a bad time, they buy less at every price level, and the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left. How about businesses? If the interest rate goes up, it's more costly to borrow money, and they invest in machines less so that their investment goes down. That's not in stocks and bonds, that big guy. And if they expect a high return on what they're buying in terms of like machines, then they're going to buy more. So if businesses invest more, meaning like on new machines and things like that, and their expectations of returns on these things is high, then the aggregate demand line shifts to the right. If they expect bad times and their returns to be low, it shifts to the left. And how about government? Well, the government's this special case. In terms of the government, it can either spend 
or not spin. It can just decide all by itself. It just decides. And this is that Keynesian idea that the government can do what it wants, whereas business people and consumers are um, going to make decisions related to different things. Look, this is just the first blast on aggregate demand. Next time I'm going to talk about aggregate supply and then we're going to put them together and we'll talk about what shifts the aggregate demand line in greater detail there. For now, I just want you to get to know there's two things. One is this, that the aggregate demand line is sloped in a particular way because of these, the real balance effect and the interest rate effect. And then it will shift right or left for particular reasons. What consumers do, what businesses do, and what the governments do. That little package is what we work with later on. Okay, I'll talk about aggregate supply in the next one, and then we'll put them together in the third one, and hopefully that'll clear things up. See you later.